Now we're shifting gears to health when having a skin cancer related procedure. One of the last things you want is more scarring and skin disfiguration. And for more on that, I'm joined by Dr. Michael Hinckley. Uh, he's a board certified dermatologist with Granger Medical. Thank yes. you so much. Thanks for having me. We were just talking about how many procedures you've done, and there is a way to eliminate scarring. Talk about that. Yeah, so uh, this procedure we do, it's called Mohs surgery. It's now, it's named after the man that invented this, it's mm. not an acronym. And the idea with skin cancer, there are lots of ways to treat skin cancer, but in more sensitive areas, say the face or some other areas where we really want to make sure we get all the cancer without creating a lot of scarring, is we have a technique where we take just what we need to, check it under the microscope, make sure all the edges are clear, and then we close it up. And the advantage of this compared to standard surgeries for skin cancer is we have the potential to take less and have a higher cure rate than what's typically been seen. And what is the reaction been because you've done hundreds if yeah, not thousands right um and so most people are actually very happy with it now anytime you do a procedure there is a risk that you will get scarring but in most cases the scarring is quite minimal and and cam camouflages quite well and so what makes this different from other procedures that may leave some scarring well the idea here is that in a standard way of removing skin cancer you take what's called a certain margin or a certain amount around the cancer itself mm -hmm. what we do is we take less than what has typically been used and we check it while the patient waits in the lab, and that way if we have to go back and take more, we can, but this gives us the opportunity to potentially take less, and if you take less, then you make less of a mark because in the end the scar will be smaller. So who are good candidates for having this procedure, and can it be done for different types of skin cancer? Yes, great question. Um, it, it can be done for almost any type of skin cancer. There are some types we see it used on more frequently. Um, it's not always done on melanoma cancers, which are uh, often a more aggressive type. Um, but uh, more of the more common skin cancers that we call basal or squamous cell. And again, it's not always used on all parts of the body, particularly head, neck. Those areas are more common to use this technique. Well, you know, I've heard people get skin cancer everywhere. So yes. what if it is on the back or the leg, somewhere else other than the face? Yes, great question. There are some other areas where it's um, perhaps we really want to minimize how much we're taking, say, the front of the leg or the hands or the feet, where it's harder to stitch those areas. So we will also use this technique there compared to the standard way. Again, the idea that we're trying to take less so it's easier to stitch up and leave a smaller scar. And I'm so glad we're talking about this topic because we are talking about the summer months that we are yes. approaching warm and warmer conditions. Yes. Uh, let's tell people what to look for in terms of skin yes, cancer. Yes, excellent. Now. And May is actually Skin Cancer Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking for, we basically break skin cancer into two groups melanoma and non-melanoma. The melanomas tend to be large, dark, irregular moles. And these particularly are, are concerning because they will show up anywhere. They are not always sun-related. So I really emphasize to my patients, you need to be looking yourself over, have someone help you twice a year, everywhere in your body. Now the non-melanoma skin cancers, they are not usually dark like this. They tend to be more pink like or that. skin colored, mm -hmm. yes. And sometimes they'll open and bleed and, um, and they tend to be more sun exposed areas. So if you have a non-healing sore, particularly in a sun exposed area, then you really should go in and see your doctor about it. Okay, excellent. And always know your family history. That's exactly. always a good tip. Yes. For more information, you can go onto their website at hinkleyderm.com. We'll have a link on our website at goodforutah.com. Glenn.